All right, so we went over the cardiac risk factors. The next two areas in your book that we need to review are pulmonary and kidneys. Pulmonary and kidneys. So, what do you do for a person who comes in and says, I smoke? Well, first thing you tell them is, well, what do you smoke? Because some things are bad for you and other things make your music amazing. So, first thing is smoking. Well, we're going to tell them that cigarette use and tobacco use need to stop. So you have to advise your patients that at least six to eight weeks need to be off smoking. Off smoking. That's right. No smoking for at least six to eight weeks prior. Why? Because if you're going to undergo general anesthesia, you're also going to get intubated. You want your lungs to be as healthy as possible when you have that tube down your throat breathing for you. The other thing to keep in mind when it comes to somebody who's a smoker is that you don't really know how long they've been smoking. Everybody overestimates, some people really underestimate, which is more common. And so you, what you want to do is you want to test for vital capacities. You want to test for vital capacities because you do not know if this person has low-level COPD or maybe they have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in the form of chronic bronchitis. You also don't know if they're emphysematics. And so therefore you will want to optimize them. They may need preoperative medications. They may need inhalational treatments. Any number of things can occur. But the thing you want to do is make sure that they've stopped smoking at least six to eight weeks and that you measure their vital capacity so that when they go under anesthesia, they're in the best possible shape they can for extubation. It's not so much about the ventilation that's taking place during the procedure. Yeah, you can just breathe for them. But then when the tube has to come out and their body has to breathe on their own, that's when difficulties arise. When it comes to kidneys, kidneys are basically as follows. Your body is going to get stressed to all hell when you cut the skin, when you introduce a catheter, when you cut something out, when you remove a tumor, whatever it is, catecholamines surge. Catecholamines are going to surge and your vessels are going to clamp down. That clamping down is going to reduce perfusion to your kidneys. So in patients who have normal kidney function, you're still going to give them perioperative fluids. Why? You want to maintain perfusion to the kidneys. You do not want ischemic injury. You do not want to have ATM. You do not want to drop their pressures. Now, in patients who have end-stage renal disease, specifically end-stage renal disease, ladies and gentlemen, the answer to the question is, if they have end-stage renal disease, the patients must undergo dialysis 24 hours prior to procedure. PTP, ladies and gentlemen, get used to seeing that term when it comes to perioperative risk assessment. Dialysis must occur 24 hours prior to procedure. To review, remember, smoking bad, not breathing bad, not having kidneys, make sure that you're optimizing them. Now, why is it they want to undergo dialysis 24 hours prior? The reason why is because you want them to be in a state when they're as dry as possible because you know during surgery they're going to get a ton of fluids and a ton of medications and they will likely then become dialyzed directly thereafter. These are the major risk factors. Now, for those patients who say to you, well, I'm having trouble smoking and stopping smoking, well, what you can tell them is that the three things that we do know that work to stop smoking, stop smoking, are as follows. The first thing is going to be, you can say, well, there is the nicotine patch, which has been shown to be helpful. The second thing is you can use pharmacologic therapy, such as medications like varenicycline, varenicycline, varenicycline. Varenicycline is a medication known as brand name Shantix. Remember, do not memorize brand names, memorize drug names. And lastly, support groups. Because one rule about quitting anything, whether it be quitting smoking, quitting drinking, quitting your favorite food, dieting, whatever it is, misery loves company. And so the point is, is that support groups have also been shown to be incredibly helpful in people who are trying to quit smoking. There are smoking quit apps, there are support groups online, and they motivate each other. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our section on preoperative assessment. We are no longer going to be moving on with this area because you basically got the person totally tuned up. You fixed their heart. You didn't give them a surgery six months within an MI. You stopped them from smoking. They're dialyzed if they needed it, and you're giving them fluids if their kidneys are working fine to maintain perfusion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in the next section, which is going to be trauma.